Hi, on a previous video I showed you how to make a router table using a piece of uh, an off-cut of kitchen worktop and a proprietary uh, aluminium insert. In this video I'm making a cabinet for that table to sit on. Uh, I thought the best thing to do, the best start would be for me to show you some of the features of this cabinet before we get on with uh, actually making it. So here it is, um, I've retained the tilting function um, that I had on my previous stand because I find it very useful to be able to uh, access the router from underneath for changing cutters and maintenance and things like that. Um, <clears throat> we've got a, a box underneath the, uh, the router which acts as a vacuum box so extraction comes through the back here uh, and it provides very good extraction. It also has a function of cooling down the router a bit. It also makes it a lot quieter which is quite a useful uh, effect. Um, I have a, a rise and fall jack here, uh, just a plain car jack which engages with the router which can allow you to sort of raise and lower it, uh, which is quite useful if you haven't got the facility for um, raising and lowering the router via the, the uh, insert plane. <coughs> uh, an NVR switch here with a socket behind which you plug the router into, and we're also sitting on lockable casters so we can move the uh, thing around the workshop if necessary. All these open space down here, I will eventually be uh, making some drawers to hold my router cutters and also my spindle moulder cutters and things like that. But that's um, for another video really. Anyway, um, hopefully this will give you a good idea about how to, uh, the sort of functions and facilities of a, a router cabinet. Also I'm hoping that it, it will give you a little bit of instruction on the sort of cabinet making techniques and things. Because uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, biscuiting and jointing and things. Anyway, let's get on with it. So we start by uh, cutting all the parts out for the, uh, the cabinet. Uh, difficult to show you this because it's um, such large parts actually. Um, but I've laid them all out on my, on my bench here. Um, <clears throat> now cutting out will depend on what te technology you have available. You could do it on the table saw uh, or you could use one of these uh, portable saws with a track or, or you could cut it out by hand. But the procedure will always be the same. You always start by establishing a good edge, good clean straight edge and then cutting everything square to that edge. So here's one of the sides with a face edge marked. There's the bottom, the other side, there's two uprights and um, the cross piece. Um, <clears throat> these faces which I've marked up on all of them, you can see they've all got a face marked on them, uh, are quite important because we're going to use them for referencing when we come to assemble things. So if I turn this side up like that, um, I can see, you can see that I've got the face side adjacent to the face side on the bottom. Um, and the face side will always be, I'm orientating it, so the face side is always to the back of the cabinet. So what we're looking at here is the back edge. Um, right, so we're going to join together these um, panels uh, using biscuits. Uh, it's a fairly standard way nowadays of uh, doing cabinet work. Uh, and to help me with that I've um, made up this uh, marking out stick. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have four biscuits along the edge of the, um, uh, the pieces and I've also marked a face edge on the end here to, to show me that this should be, marked, be placed against the face edge that we've got on the, on the panel. I say we're using the face edge for orientation all the time. So if I lay that on there like that, I've got the two panels um, put together. If I just clamp that on there like that, I'm making sure that's lined up so all the edges I've got all the face faces together here with the face end on the on the stick, uh, all lined up at the end here, and I can just square down like that, and that indicates where we're going to be placing the biscuits, where the cursor on the biscuit jointer should be sitting when we cut the biscuit slots. Uh, I'm also going to mark just as an aid memoir really, uh, to avoid any mistakes later on, I'm just going to put a liner on there 
and that tells me uh, that I want the biscuit slots to be on this side where that line is. And if I move this pin out of the way so that the one underneath is here and I'm just going to put a similar line on there. Basically it's a way of um, avoiding any slips. I'm going to do a similar thing on the bottom. Uh, so this is the bottom here, this is the underneath of the bottom and the edge, the face edge is here. Uh, if I was to tip this up you'd see the face edge marking underneath. And I'm going to place the marking out stick on with the face edge marker against the edge there and mark off like that. I'm going to square those markings across. Now the biscuits are going to go in the end of the bottom so I'm just going to put a line along there just to remind me that's where I want the biscuits to be. Now we've also got a shelf that goes across um, the middle of the uh, cabinet which will be the, obviously the same length as the bottom. Uh, we need to position, mark out the position of it. Now we've got those two uprights that come up from the shelf. Now if we lay the upright on the side and mark across <clears throat> that indicates where the top of the shelf will come <coughs> and we'll use that reference later for, for, uh, for biscuiting. One thing I will do uh, on this shelf marking I'm going to just put a couple of little arrows, markers, to show that the shelf will actually be sitting below that line. Um, a lot of marking out is really sort of thinking about what uh, problems you might have later on, what mistakes you can make. Now, uh, biscuiting on this little narrow edge, it's 18 mil. This uh, this um, ply, uh, it would be quite sort of tricky to get the nice flat to get the fence sitting nice and flat on this edge. So I've clamped an extra piece on which gives me a, a bigger surface for this fence to sit onto. And I've made sure that this clamped piece is nice and flush with the top edge. So I've got that nice big surface now which I can uh, rest the, uh, the fence on. Now it's very important that we get the fence nice and flat on there, that's why I've clamped this on. Um, it's also a good idea before you actually take the cut uh, to just sort of give the um, the jointer a little bit of a sort of a wobble just to make sure that you can feel that this corner is sitting positively into that corner there it's feeling really positively sat down there otherwise you'll find that the the bottom edge of this won't be in line with the the bottom board when it's sitting. side piece at the bottom and we're now going to do the, the bottom. <clears throat> uh, so we've got the markings here for the um, biscuit positions and I've got that line there telling me that we're going to be cutting the slots into the end here. So I've clamped this in the bench and I'm making sure I've got some overhang uh, to avoid any danger of the, the biscuit uh, being lifted up by uh, resting on the bench. Or Basically, uh, the outer joints of the, uh, the cabinet. We now, now need to start thinking about the interior joints, and that's mainly where the shelf comes across in the middle here. So basically, we want the shelf to be sitting on this line we've previously marked here, where we've indicated it's going to be sitting below the line. 
Now the shelf's actually going to be sat forward from the back edge um, because we've got a 15mm thick back fitted to it. So that in effect we'll have a 15mm margin here. Um, <clears throat> we could biscuit this just by offering the biscuit up to there but it wouldn't be terribly accurate trying to line it up with that line. Fortunately there is a, another way we can go about this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this board down, shelf board, and line it up with that previously marked line and also offer up a piece of packing 15mm wide, the same thickness as the back, so that that shelf board is actually in effect lined up with the back edge, with the face edge of the side, but 15mm in. So we've used 15mm packing to position it. And then I'm going to clamp it on and then we'll do the biscuiting from there, which we'll see in a minute. Okay, so I've uh, clamped this board on, as I was saying, and I'm just going to check it's uh, square. That seems okay. And to do the biscuiting, we're going to use the fact that the biscuit <coughs> will, the centre of the biscuit will be 10mm from this face here. And if I offer the, bis the um, biscuit up like that, and biscuit into these end boards, we'll end up with biscuit 10 mil up from this surface. And then if I biscuit in that direction, we'll then end up with a biscuit 10 mil back from this board. And when, the, when we elevate the board up into position, it will, should be lined up dead on line with that line that we've got the board on at the moment. Let's try it and see. One additional advantage of this system is that you don't actually need to mark off the biscuit positions onto this board because you're picking them up from the, the board that we've clamped on. <coughs> the other thing is you need to make sure that this board isn't, there's no, hasn't lifted at this end. So you need to check that and if it has lifted, just somehow clamp it down to make sure that it's dead flat on this lower board. Anyway, let's see whether it's worked. Okay, so <clears throat> I've put some biscuits in. Let's uh, just check how well it's lining up on that line. There. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Um, it seems to be pretty well on that line. Yeah. If I just check for squareness. Yeah, that's good. And it's good. I'll allow enough room at the back here for the uh, back to come in. Great. We need to cut a 100mm diameter hole in the back panel of the uh, cabinet to fit the dust extraction uh, into the vacuum box. <coughs> and I made up this little uh, sort of mini trammel really to fit on the bottom of my router. So I've got this MDF plate which I've just screwed through into the uh, router base. There's a pin here, uh, and that is set 50mm from the edge of the router, which is coming through this hole in the, uh, in the base. So 50mm radius gives us 100mm diameter. And we'll drill a hole in the centre and just rotate the router around that pin to create the 100mm diameter hole. So I'm ready to take the cut now and I've um, elevated the, the back piece away from the uh, bench to avoid any embarrassing uh, circles cut into my bench top. <clears throat> I'm 
look at all the way around yet because I want to leave a couple of points to locate this because if this dropped away if we cut all the way around then we could end up with an uneven cut around the edge so I'm just going to cut around here and leave two points of contact which I'll then cut away with a chisel or something to let that drop out.